Teens charged for setting car on fire. Arts offered lifeline through state grant. Road projects affect I-43 today and tomorrow. These stories and more coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, the service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, September 8, 2020. The summer activity season is ending as it began under the shadow of the pandemic. Instead of gathering freely with family and friends and with crowds strolling the paths at the Sheboygan County Fair, Labor Day, as was Memorial Day, is instead carefully planned, responsibly spaced, and masked for safety, at least for those who are the wishes of the state and local health officials who pronounce that mass gatherings and events are not recommended or advised. The Sheboygan County Division of Public Health will join the rest of the community observing a break on Monday and so issued its last daily report until Tuesday, September 8th in in it, nine positive test returns out of a sample of 303 were received since Thursday, and that is a positive rate just under 3%, and those cases contribute to the 107 that are currently active. And the running total of 1,117 cases, which is seven persons, one less than, than Thursday, are receiving hospital treatments from their symptoms. 15 persons have officially recovered in the previous 24 hours. And Wisconsin's positive case rate leaped from 7.9 to 12.8% Friday as 1,498 of the total 11,702 test results came back positive and the seven-day running average was pushed to 9.1%. Seven more persons succumbed to COVID-19, raising the death toll to 1,153, which is 52 more persons entered hospitals, putting the total population of COVID patients at 293,104, of whom are in the ICU. Another 140 persons are hospitalized awaiting test results and 399 persons are on ventilators. Three teens are facing arson charges after Sheboygan police say they set a car on fire on Monday night. Officers were called to a home on Martin Avenue after one of the teens got upset with their neighbor. Police say two 15 and 16 year olds were apprehended after the Ford Focus went up in flames. Police say they're also looking into the possibility that these same teens may have lit some trash cans in the area on fire as well. Two projects to repair beam guards on I-43 may affect travelers today and tomorrow, according to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Today, maintenance crews will be repairing on beam guard on southbound I-43 at the Cedar Grove exit between 7 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Then on Wednesday, the beam guard on southbound I-43 at Highway O will be repaired between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Various lanes will be closed during the repairs and you are asked to slow down and be mindful of workers near the roadway. You will be able to voice your opinions and propose changes to fares charged for certain one-way trips by Shoreline Metro at a public hearing later this month. Director of Shoreline Metro, Derek Munch says, that Sheboygan's public transit system is proposing a permanent 50 cent fare increase for ADA paratransit service. 
and a permanent 50 cent increase for county elderly and disabled program services. Those fares are now $3.50 and $2.50 respectively and changes are approved would be adjusted on January 1st next year. The public hearing will be held at 5 p.m. Tuesday, September 22nd at City Hall. And if you cannot be at that hearing to voice your input, you can submit written communications via either email or regular mail. Cultural organizations in Wisconsin that have been strangled by restrictions imposed due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic are being offered a lifeline through a $5 million grant announced Thursday by Governor Tony Evers. The program provides eligible organizations grants awards of up to $250,000 to cover pandemic related impacts such as lost re revenue and increased costs related to workers comp cleaning and sanitization and purchases of services or equipment needed for remote workers. The money is available through Federal CARES Act dollars. Sheboygan's Wild Center Foundation, which oversees the operation of the Stephanie Wild Center for the Performing Arts, joined an, another such entities in Wisconsin in a change.org petition drive last month in hopes of promoting such state support without which it is estimated that 90% of similar avenues or venues could be forced to permanently close, and that's according to the National Independent Venue Association. And finally, Vice President Mike Pence and Vice Presidential nominee Camilla Harris both spent their Labor Day in Wisconsin. Their visits came within a week after both President Trump and presidential nominee Joe Biden made visits to Kenosha. Harris made time on Monday to talk with the family of Jacob Blake, the man who was shot by Kenosha police two weeks ago. Blake himself joined on the conversation by phone call. Harris also spent part of her day at the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers training facility in Milwaukee and met with union workers. She then hosted a roundtable discussion about racial equality with black business owners from Milwaukee. Pence made his way over to the western part of the state where he spoke at the Dairyland Power Cooperative in La Crosse. Labor Day is usually a day off, but campaign stops made for a busy Monday for Harris and Pence. Pence said it is great to be with you in La Crosse, and I cannot think of a better place to be on an American holiday where we celebrate America's tradition of hard work and the American dream. Harris said, today, of course, is Labor Day, and part of the work we have been doing is to honor the men and women of labor, including what we have talked about, this pride in Milwaukee, and so many of us have it in organized labor. Vice President Mike Pence's focus was on stronger American workforce, highlighting the Trump administration's economic policy. We have revived our economy by cutting taxes across the board, rolling back the federal red tape, unleashing American energy, and fighting for free and fair trade, said Pence. Senator Camilla Harris visit also focused on American workers and the Biden campaign's mission to help small businesses build back better. The pledge Joe Biden and I are making to the small businesses throughout our country, including here in Wisconsin, that we see you, we understand the significance of what you are in terms of health and being of communities, said Harris. Both Pence and Harris also spoke about the events in Kenosha. This was Harris's first in-person solo campaign event since becoming Biden's running mate. 
This was Pence's second visit to Wisconsin in the last three weeks. And that is our report for today. Join me again next time for more local news and stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.